idiot. I was paying attention to the narrative uh, that that they were explaining to me. Okay. Now I'm not blaming them. I could have done my own research. I could I, I could have done you know we didn't have the internet at, for a portion of that time, but that's okay. You know there were other ways to become knowledgeable, learn the truth, find out what the what the hell's really going on. Although we were supposed to be relying on our media, but that all fell away. Uh, I want to. I want to. Hang on a second, guys. It's 9:30, and this is important because we need to bring Aniko in here. We're gonna. We're gonna come back to this in a second, but I. I. I want to just. Just want to tie things together here. What we're talking about here is that when money entered, the the the, the Democratic Party. Okay, when the DLC was created for the purpose of negotiating with lobbyists and corporations so they would have power, like the GOP was doing. When that happened, those four things came to pass. And those four things came to pass because the Democratic National Party was no longer listening to the people, really. It was listening to the people that mattered, the corporations and the lobbyists. And it was getting things done, just not things that were really in the best interest of the people. However, I was sold the idea that all of those things were great for the people. All right? And my fault for not knowing, for not realizing, for not seeking truth, but that the narrative as I heard it as a 20-something in the 90s. Chris so, Matthews was selling that to you. Right. Chris Matthews was selling that to me. All right. Uh, so Tony Nico's Coelho gonna... convinced... What? Tony Coelho convinced Tip O'Neill to hire Chris Matthews, and they rebranded the Democratic Party then. Wow. Wow. That's... Uh... The same Chris Matthews that you see on this, MSNBC this is, today. This is the very Chris Matthews with the <laughs> giant head and the tiny hardball hat? That Chris <laughs> Matthews? <laughs> that, that, so, I mean, is are we saying that Chris Matthews is like the, the father of all bobblehead uh, propaganda pundits? <laughs> I, I That works for me, you know? And his his uh, all right that works for me all right so Aniko what's going on with the Bernie Chase yes hello everybody uh, today we have Bernie at the Pine Ridge Reservation Community Meeting uh, and he is going to be opening the doors at 8:45 a.m. and starting the program at 10:45 a.m. we are going to try to cut to that uh, we have feeds waiting uh, but we're just monitoring them so yes see what we can do with that. Then we have in Rapid City um, a rally, a Future to Believe in rally. The doors will open at 12 noon and program starts at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. And then we have, uh, let's see, Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. That's tonight after We the People. And that is going to be doors opening at 5 p.m. and program starting at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Then tomorrow, Friday, we have a Future to Believe in Rally in Fargo, and that will start at 11 a.m. And do, uh, program, I'm sorry, doors will open at 11 a.m. and program will start at 2 p.m. That's kind of a wide gap there, but they uh, they're giving a few hours because I guess maybe that's going to be a big one. Yeah, maybe so. In a three-hour gap. So that one is going to be at the Ramada Fargo Convention Center, probably a big place. Um, then he's going on the same day. Tomorrow the 13th, Friday the 13th tomorrow, is Bismarck Rally, and that is going to start at 6 p.m. and the program at 8 p.m. Central Time. And that's what we've got so far. He'll probably throw in some more over the day, over the next couple days. So that's the chaser. Busy man. Yes. Damn, he goes all over the place. Thank you, Nico. You're welcome. All right, so we're monitoring that stream. We're going to cut to the uh, Bernie rally at uh, Pine Ridge Reservation because we can, and why not? And it's always good to see Bernie. Now, Scott, I, I know we're kind of bouncing around on this article, but is, is there anything in this that you, you know, what summarize for us? What is this, this third way? Are we disappearing? You're calling Bernie is pointing out a new way. Well, the old way. What? Wh where are you going with that? Because I'm just bouncing around to chunks. <laughs> well, I think that, one of, I think that the third way. I'm hoping this is the last grasp of the third way, and 
the last gasp and okay we'll start okay. with Hillary I'll start with Bill and end with Hillary that I don't think that the Democrats can <laughs> nominate a third way candidate again for a while after the Bernie movement so so are you now are you suggesting then that it would that the best bet in the new whatever would be a Jimmy Carter I mean obviously Bernie but moving forward, we're trying to find somebody that can that a Jimmy Carter type, as you said earlier. No, 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 no. Well, Jimmy Carter, interesting as in so far as is on diplomatic issues, but he was conservative Democrat. He was more in the mold of Bill Clinton than you think so, Bernie Sanders. Just the one area where Jimmy Carter was good was on diplomatic issues, but. He was a Southern conservative Democrat. Interesting. Interesting. I like how you said, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in there you had alluded to that. So what? Uh, he was the model. That that was, they pointed to him, said, that's oh, the kind of candidate we need. Okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. And, uh, and that's why Bill Clinton was what he was to the party. Okay. Nominating Mike Dukakis and... Right, right. Walter Mondale, we're going to keep losing, is what they were saying. They needed another Jimmy Carter. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Well, I don't know. I like Carter, but uh, right, right. He 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 was great after the White House too. <laughs> well, yeah, he was. He was that, much more effective. That was more. He was better after than while he was in. Let's see. He got a bum rap while he was in. He got stuck with the recession and the whole Iran uh, uh, hostage crisis was. Uh, he got blamed for an inept military and for not acting right away, and I get that. And blah, 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 but yeah, got a bum rap. I remember that well because I was I was uh, doing impersonations of Jimmy Carter in the third and fourth grade because that's when it was going on. <laughs> I remember that. So uh, he would. I remember his quote: "I will not take military action against Iran." He said that a number of times, but he didn't sound like Bill Clinton. I can't do Carter anymore. It's been a long time ago. Uh, a couple questions real quick before we... Uh... Hey, guys, the Pine Ridge thing's showing 50 minutes now. Did they push this back? I hope not. Anyway. Well, it... What times you gave were an hour ago, right? Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see. I thought it was 9.45 my time. You're this saying 10:45, so 10:45. Yeah, so maybe we won't be cutting to the, uh, <laughs> maybe we won't be cutting to the rally. Maybe I messed up on times. Anyway, a um, couple questions here. Uh, if Bernie, if 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 uh, Bernie wins California by two points, wouldn't he still go over her delegate lead? No. No. <laughs> if he wins by two points, he won't gain any delegates. Right. Right. They split the delegates. He wins by two points. Yeah. He's got to win by 70, 80 percent, 90 percent. He's got to sweep the whole thing. I mean, I don't even know at what percentage he gets enough delegates to flip over, you know. But it's a high number. Yeah. It's a, it's a really high number, guys. H hitting, when, when they talk about what percentage does he have to win by, and they have this number like 65 percent, that's just to stay pace. That's not to gain that's just to keep pace on track. Well, no, his, it, it would gain if he if he got sixty five percent of the rest of the delegates. You, you might be a little short now. I'm not sure what whether it's sixty five percent now or not. It, it changes. After the last one, it went, it could have went up, but that right. would he would catch her if if he got sixty five percent of the rest of the delegates. Right. Okay. Well, there you go. It's unlikely. Right. But who knows? Who knows at this point? I'm seeing lots and lots of articles talking, saying very different things about that. We'll get into that. Uh, uh, please continue to promote the march on Philly. David Dunmere, I need, I need uh, to know which march. And that's part of one of the things that we're going to talk about with all these events and these protests that are going on is that. There'll be a lot. Right. <laughs> There's so many, uh, so many things happening that uh, what I'm promoting is that everybody get their ass to Philly whatever group, whatever march you, you do it in, just show up in numbers, show up to support. That's, that's, we just want to show, uh, uh, just want to be there. 
and I'm going to try to be there, trying to figure out how to get there and and do something there. <laughs> We're talking about a lot of different things. Uh, anyway, uh, was Carter was it Carter who installed solar panels on the White House? It most certainly was. <laughs>